Hi, my name is Debbie Euster, and I'll be talking about using Python Jupyter Notebooks plus NB Grader as a homework system. And thanks very much to the organizers. This is my third year attending Eames. I've always enjoyed it, and I'm excited to be presenting. So the background is uh, that this homework system was used in my Applied Linear Algebra course taken by students in the Masters of Science in Data Science program at Ramapo College of New Jersey, which is a small public liberal arts college in the US. In this course, my homework assignments were completely contained within Python Jupyter Notebook. So if you're not sure what that means, you'll, you'll see it in a second, but it's a document that contains both text and code. And I included many different types of problems, written problems, including proofs, computational problems, and even coding problems. So let's take a look at what this would look like on the student's end. So here's an example. This is a, a demo assignment that I prepared for the talk. Um, and you see that some code is already written, for example, importing the NumPy package. Here are instructions, and you see that it uses rich markdown syntax. I have the latex symbol here. I can have code inserted. And I have a written exercise where students need to uh, determine some statement about matrices. So students can edit this cell. There's my answer. And let's include some kind of math stuff just so you can see what that looks like. X squared plus square root two. And then you can execute that cell and it becomes nicely displayed markdown. Here's an example of a true false exercise. In this case, students are told to store their answer, either true or false, the Boolean, in the variable ants2. So this not implemented error is just a, a placeholder. I'm gonna erase that. And let's suppose that I want to answer uh, true. But it doesn't matter if it's right or wrong for now. So I can run that cell. And then here we have a check cell. It's just to make sure the format is correct. If this runs without errors, then everything's OK. So this is just to show you by contrast. Let's say that the student had um, entered their answer as true the string rather than true the Boolean. So then when this cell runs, they get an error and they see that the format of the answer was incorrect. So behind the scenes, when I grade this, there are additional hidden tests here that will check for correctness. Right now, it's just checking the format. Here's a multiple choice problem. And so same thing, the student wants to enter uh, answer, let's say B as their choice. So they set the variable answer three equal to, in this case, the string B. And this check cell just checks that the student answered either A, B, C, or D. Uh, should just be A, B, or C. So we've seen true, false, and multiple choice. Those are maybe nothing special, but you can uh, do much more complicated things. So for example, here's a question where the student has to construct a vector A such that A transpose V uh, extracts the fifth entry of uh, a vector V of length 10. And we're supposed to store that in the variable a and in our course we cover numpy so students well, one of the learning goals is for students to learn how to do something like this in python so the student can actually enter their vector here as a numpy array and there are different ways to set this up but this one's the easiest to sort of understand we'll just type it out And oops, didn't load the package. OK, and then here our public tests are just checking, uh, is the answer an actual NumPy array? And does it have length 10? OK, and you can even give questions that don't have a, a unique answer. So here, the student is asked to find a 2 by 2 matrix uh, that's non-zero, but whose square is the 0 matrix. And in this case, I've shown the tests to the students. I'm not looking for a specific answer here. I'm just looking to see that the student has a non-zero matrix and such that when you square the matrix, this is a, a NumPy 
notation for matrix multiplication, you end up getting the, the two by two matrix of zeros. So anyway, the student completes this notebook, saves it, and then submits it. So now let's take a look on the back end. So here's how I created this, and I'll have to just go through this quickly and show you a bit. Um, you can make a, a regular notebook where you have all your questions written out, and then you install the NB Grader package, and it has this sort of add-on for the Jupyter Notebook interface. So you select Create Assignment, and then you can designate each cell as being read-only if you don't want the students to modify it, or it's a, a manually graded kind of question, or it is auto-graded. So this cell is where I want the students to write their answer, so I'm going to designate, designate that as an auto-graded answer. And then in the cell below, that's where I'm going to write the tests, so I designate that as auto-grader tests. And now I fill it in. So I can write the solution here. The solution will obviously not be displayed in the student version. And here I have my tests. We saw this statement before, but now I have my hidden tests uh, checking that the answer is in fact C. And if the test gets passed, so if this cell executes without error, the student will get one point. That's what I've set this to. And uh, I'll go through this quickly, but you can do this again with the coding ones here. I'm testing that the student's answer is uh, the unique correct answer here. I'm using an all close assertion because of floating point arithmetic uh, subject to rounding errors. So rather than checking for equality, I check that they're close. And uh, here's an example just to show you, you don't have to write the solution out if you don't want. In this case, there are many, many correct solutions. This was the two by two matrix whose square is the zero matrix. And um, in this case, I have all public tests. I'm not hiding any of the tests from the students. Here's just a glance at the assignment manager page. And this is all hosted on my local machine uh, as part of my Python installation. So this is just the NB grader add-on. So you see I have a number of assignments that I gave in my linear algebra class. Here's the demo assignment that I created now. And here's what the, the marking interface looks like. You can always type comments for the students and you can use LaTeX notation there or any, any kind of markdown. And here, uh, this is an auto-graded exercise. So by default, the student got it correct, 0.5 out of 0.5, but I can override that grade or even give extra credit. Here's a manually graded exercise. So this is my student's answer. Uh, the student added the blue color just to um, make it a little easier for them to read. And I've given them full credit and I could type any comments here. When the student receives the assignment back, they get an HTML document that I upload to the VLE or LMS. And here's the, the summary of their scores and any comments that I've left. And they can go through and see all their scores and comments. And I export the grades themselves, the marks, as a spreadsheet that I upload into my VLE. So uh, what I liked about this system, I, I really liked for this course doing homework in Jupyter Notebooks. These are future data scientists. They have to be comfortable with coding and have to be able to apply the mathematics that they learn. So uh, I really liked having this, this type of homework system and that I could combine all the different types of problems I wanted to give. They, they even had proofs. They learned to write in LaTeX without having the complication of compiling an entire LaTeX document and dealing with the all the headers. So it's, it's a really kind of the gentlest way, I think, to be introduced to LaTeX and Markdown. Uh, I like that NB Grader and Jupyter are free open source tools and that it was very lightweight for students. Uh, students received a single notebook file. They did not need to install anything in order to use NB Grader, anything beyond their Python installation. And then they simply uploaded that same notebook file. What I didn't like is that um, at the time, the solutions would automatically be displayed in the notebooks that got returned to the students. And sometimes I wanted to keep those hidden. Uh, I believe that in the newest version of NB Grader, they have made that uh, a configurable option. So I'll, I'm planning to look at that in the future. Um, I didn't like the, the LaTeX rendering and grading view. I'll show you that in a second. Um, 
I didn't like that I executed my students' code on my local machine. Some of you are probably horrified by that. It is possible to grade in, in a containerized environment, but that was just sort of too much for me to take on the first time, so I just decided to risk it, and thankfully nobody, nobody hacked my system. Um, and the workflow is a little clunky as far as there are a lot of steps involved in getting the homework, marking the homework, and returning the homework. If you are operating a, a Jupyter Hub, which is like a little uh, sort of Python Jupyter server, it's a lot more seamless. But um, I was having students do the homework locally. Uh, so here's what I was talking about with the, the LaTeX view. This is what the students submitted. That You see they have this beautifully typeset answer. But in my grading interface, uh, the, the LaTeX is not rendered. So it's okay for me. I'm pretty comfortable uh, reading LaTeX notation, but, but this was something that irked me a little bit. What I plan to try the next time around is a, a different auto grading system called Otter Grader. It was developed by the team at UC Berkeley. Uh, this is a, a free open source product, and I plan to use it in conjunction with Gradescope, which is a, a cloud-based grading uh, marking platform, which is not free or open source, but I'm, I'm planning to give this a try. Perhaps I'll report back uh, at next year's EAMS to see which system I liked better. And finally, here are some links that you might want to check out if you want more information on how you can get started with this. And you can download my slides with the link here at the bottom. Thanks very much.